Hi folks, for those that don't know me, I'm Cindy Nebel, and uh, I'm one of the learning scientists, and today we're trying something a little bit new. Uh, we're doing a vlog today instead of a blog entry, uh, and we'd love to know what you guys think of this. So um, give us a shout out on social media and just tell us whether this is something you'd like to see more of, or maybe don't repeat this. Um, we're, we're not going to replace the blogs, but we were thinking about doing some of these occasionally. Um, so let us know what you think. Um, so today I am really excited to talk to you about an article I just read hot off the presses um, from the Journal of Applied Research in Memory and Cognition. This is Bureau et al. Uh, 2020 uh, Fostering Effective Learning Strategies in Higher Education, a Mixed Method Study. I'm really excited about this because this study was an intervention where they took university students and um, taught them about the strategies of effective learning to see whether or not they could get them to use them. So this study really is based off of an original study by Dunlosky et al. 2013 that we cite quite a bit on the, on the page. It's actually one of the places where uh, we got our information about the six strategies of effective learning that we talk about. Um, so in the original paper, Dunlosky et al. covered 10 different strategies, and some of those have really high research support, and some of them were pretty low research support and shouldn't be used. So what they did in this particular study was they taught students about all 10 strategies and described to them which ones were more effective and which ones were less and why. So um, what they did here was what they called a study smart intervention. And there's a lot of detail about this intervention included in the study. So I would really encourage you to go read it yourself. So I'll include uh, the, the um, reference in the text here so that you can go find this on your own. Um, but what they did was they had a three-part intervention. And that's kind of the cool part about this was they didn't just do what a lot of studies in the past have done, which is really focusing on just one part of this. So they included three parts. So uh, entering university students uh, were randomly assigned to either receive the intervention right away, or if they were in the control group, they still got the intervention, but they waited a little while to get it. And so in weeks two, four, and five of the semester, they went through two hour um, training sessions where um, they were doing something different in each one. In week two, they called this the awareness session. And in this session, they really were just um, showing students what these strategies were all about. So they gave them uh, lots of information about all 10 strategies, talked about which ones were good, which ones were bad, and why. And then um, the next session in week four was the reflection session. And the reflection session uh, included some reflective writing and some other activities really aimed at getting students to think about what strategies they are and are not using and why. And then the last session was what they call the experience session, where students were actually given some hands-on practice with the strategies that they um, did some activities where they got to experience retrieval practice, for example. Uh, so they tried um, two different strategies and then they could actually see that they did learn more with the more effective strategy. So um, again, they did this for six hours total, right? Two hours for each of these sessions. And then they were testing the students on how much they had actually learned about the strategies and which are more effective than others. And then um, they asked them to tell them how much they were actually using these strategies on Likert scales. And then um, the last thing they did that I think is really kind of the meat of this study is they did a focus group where they asked students what they thought of the intervention, um, which strategies they were using and why. So, not surprisingly, after six hours of learning about these different strategies, students did in fact um, know something more about these strategies than the control group. And they reported using these strategies more than the control group. So yay, that's what we would hope for in an intervention, but also might not be super surprising. What, again, I feel like is really the meat here is this focus group where, um, they, they talked with students also about why they weren't using strategies. And in the end, they came up with sort of three different buckets for why students might not adopt learning strategies. The first bucket, if you will, were these internal factors. Things like, you know, old habits die hard and 
I really like the thing that I've been doing and it works for me and I'm not going to change that. Or a lack of discipline of, ugh, I know I'm supposed to space out study, but I don't feel like it kind of thing. So internal factors. The next was uncertainty. And uncertainty were things like I really didn't understand why these strategies are considered effective. I didn't really understand how to do them. Um, I, I wasn't sure it was worth it given the effort that it was going to take. And um, I wasn't completely convinced that it would actually be better for me than the other strategies that I normally use. The last bucket, if you will, uh, were external factors. These are things like, you know, in my math class, I don't really see why I need to use dual coding. And I mean, they're probably right, um, that you don't necessarily have to use every strategy in every situation. So there were things like that, but there were also things like I wanted to do retrieval practice, but I didn't have any materials to do that with. I didn't have any practice quiz questions or practice tests, so I didn't do it. So sort of the availability of materials or the fit with the situation, uh, things about the situation that made them less likely to, to engage in these strategies. The last thing that came out of that focus group was that students reported really wishing that they had more practice with the strategies themselves. So instead of the intervention having sort of these contrived materials, they said, gosh, I really wish that we could have used our own class materials and had some guidance about what we were supposed to be doing with them. So there's some limitations about this study, but I think there's some really, really great takeaway messages. The limitation here that probably matters the most um, is that the the results were self-report for the most part, um, that students said, oh yeah, I totally use those strategies, and that this happened at week six. So the final test here, the post-test, was one week after they had finished the intervention. So it's a, perhaps not surprising that after getting six hours of training that we would see higher performance immediately and the students would say, oh yeah, no, I totally do that. So there might be some demand characteristics going on here. I would be interested to see a, a, a follow-up study of what happens at a, at a longer delay. Do we see that students persist with this to the end of the semester or to the next year? Are they still using these strategies more? And then um, the, the big sort of takeaway from this, though, I really feel like comes from that focus group, that we have more information now about how to get students really involved. And I think it says a lot about making this a part of the classroom culture, that having these sort of one-off interventions where students are, are given information that really isn't what they're doing in class, and then asking them to apply that to class is transfer, and we know that transfer is somewhat limited. So instead, if we really try to integrate these things into the classroom where students are engaging in this with the materials they're actually um, studying and, and that they're getting those materials from their instructor, or maybe even engaging in these activities in the classroom so that they can see that they're more effective and are more comfortable and, and find them easier to use, those kinds of things are really where we're going to see some big benefits. So um, I think this study is really cool. I think there's a lot to learn here. Like I said, I'm including the reference so you can take a look yourself and get lots of detail if you're wanting to do an intervention like this on your own. Um, and again, please let us know if you like this uh, vlog format over our traditional blog um, or not. Uh, we will take that feedback. So uh, thanks so much and we'll see you back here next week.